Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to News Toast, and today we're going to talk about some of those mega acquisitions that Xbox and Sony made these past few years. Each acquisition has yielded different results, a little bit of a yin and yang, if you will, though I, I would say that both does raise some important questions. In the aspect of Xbox, we got some new results today, and while most of it looks good because of the Activision Blizzard acquisition, there is that looming concern that some fans have. Do they have a future in the console market? A little bit of a spoiler alert here, but yes, I absolutely believe that they do, and I'm going to explain all of that here in just a little bit. Now, as for PlayStation, they've had a lot of trouble with Bungie up to this point. Sony doesn't seem to be overly satisfied with that mind-boggling $3.6 billion that they paid for Bungie. I mean, I thought that was an overpay in the first place. I know a lot of people did for that matter. And now, we're all just kind of speculating about their future and what Sony has planned for them next. And I think by this point, a harsh reality is about ready to hit. Before we get started, though, do make sure to hit that subscribe button if you like these type of updates. That way, every time I make a new video, you'll be one of the first to get notified. So do hit those buttons. But with that said, let's just go ahead and have some fun and jump right into it, starting off with PlayStation VR 2. Now, we talked about this the other day. Sony temporarily slashed the prices for their VR 2 headset by 2 hundred dollars this is in direct correlation with their pc adapter that goes live next month on august 7th and this does give them one unique advantage over other high-end vr headsets it'll be the only device that you can play both playstation and pc vr games so that is actually a very cool feature and the fact that it's currently marked down to 350 dollars and even though the pc adapter is an extra 60 dollars that's still $240 less than the Valve Index and its base station combo. So this, by all means, is an incredible deal if you want a high quality VR headset. And to no surprise whatsoever, yeah, this has helped them move a lot of new units to more customers. Reportedly, PlayStation VR 2 sales have risen by more than 2,000% since this deep discount. So, you know, that sounds like great news for Sony, but I, I do feel that it's important to note that this information still lacks context. Yes, a 2,000% increase sounds very impressive on paper because in some ways it absolutely is. But at the same time, you do also have to consider the original number that it's increasing from. So, in other words, if its sales were already low in the first place, which by all indication it was, well then, a 2,000% increase might not necessarily be as significant as it initially sounds. It's kind of like me saying, well, the upcoming Concord launch will see a 100% increase in concurrent players on Steam compared to its open beta, which was just 2,300. I mean, a 100% increase sounds nice, but in reality, that would mean it only has 4,600 players for its launch, and in the grand scheme of things, that is still ultimately a flop. So percentage increases are nice, but it definitely doesn't tell the entire story either. So I can't sit here and say that this is groundbreaking for the PSVR 2 and that it's going to save that device, because in all truth, we don't really know that information. The good news is that I'll say what we do know is that the inclusion of PC and its discount is at least drawing new interest, and that's what we're seeing here. And, and now we'll just kind of see if they can sustain that success enough for Sony to further commit into VR technology. I do think that's the big question with PSVR 2 right now. How much more of a commitment are they going to make to that device? Moving on, though, apparently it's been a great week for controller collectors out there. Sony just announced their limited edition AstroBot controller. I think that thing looks amazing. And now, on top of that, Xbox also got in on the action because they just announced their special edition Sky Cypher controller. You can see it here, and it's got a translucent blue design with accented rubberized grips. It almost kind of reminds me of Cortana to a degree. I know a lot of people have been referencing the Deadpool controller. Uh, some of you all are sick, but honestly, uh, I, I think the design looks really good here. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite designs that they've made, and, and that's saying a lot because, you, you know, it's no secret that they make a lot of controllers, and... 
they do a good job with them for that matter. So I'm really impressed with this one, and I might actually have to go out and get this one myself. Maybe I'll make a YouTube short about it or something, but if, if you are interested in this controller, it's going for $70, or you can get it at VGP for $58. I'll go ahead and leave a link below, uh, but you can pre-order it right now, and it's supposed to release on August 13th. Okay, so speaking of Xbox, they're kind of a weird company. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't like them, because I do. But I think that we can all admit that they're kind of a weird company to gauge and to figure out their business strategy. I mean, by this point, they are doing things that we have never seen before from any other platform holder. They were the first to put their games on PC day and date. They were the first to heavily emphasize subscription gaming with day one first party games. And they are also the only platform holder that puts their games on opposing platforms like PlayStation and Nintendo. Now that's only with a select few games, but what I'm trying to say here is that they do things a little bit differently than what we see from their direct competitors. And because of all of that, Xbox is constantly scrutinized and bombarded with questions about this strategy, its sustainability, and right now I'd say more importantly, about the future of Xbox consoles. And that question there has once again reared its ugly head because Microsoft just revealed their quarter four financial results. Now obviously Microsoft as a company is making a never ending amount of money, as they always do. But as for their gaming division, because that's what we care about, you can see here posted up by Tom Warren that gaming revenue is up by 44%, which sounds absolutely incredible. We'll come back to that here in just a moment. But Xbox content services revenue is also up by 61%. Again, very, very impressive. But then there's the Xbox hardware, and, and this is what a lot of people are keying in on. As we've kind of seen throughout 2024, Xbox has seen a pretty steady decrease this past year, and, and that's been majorly highlighted in their quarter four results with a 42% decrease. So in other words, their software is doing very good, in large part because of Activision Blizzard's inclusion. Without them, it's been pointed out that their results would have mostly been flat, but hey, I'd say that that's exactly why they went out and paid nearly $70 billion for Activision Blizzard. You are seeing their impact here. It is a game changer for them, and that shows in the results. I think the interesting thing about Activision Blizzard, though, goes beyond just these results because, I mean, this shows you the discrepancy of just Xbox and Xbox with Activision Blizzard. But I think what's going to be even more interesting is the results for next year, because then you're going to be able to compare Activision Blizzard games with and without Xbox Game Pass. How much is something like Call of Duty going into Game Pass day one? How is that going to impact them going forward? And that's something that we're going to learn next year over time. But right now we are seeing just how much of a huge impact that they're having on the Xbox business. Now, as for their hardware, on the other hand, it seems like they are struggling to reach new customers. And with everything that we've seen this past year with their more multi-platform, but not completely multi-platform direction, there is that looming question that some people have. Will Xbox bell out of the console market and completely focus on software, you know, become a third-party company? And, and I'm going to say this right now. I'm fairly confident that they will not go in that direction. My prediction is that we will absolutely see more consoles from Xbox, and the reason I say that is quite simple. As long as Xbox Game Pass exists, and as long as it remains a core part of their business, and as long as Nintendo and PlayStation doesn't allow it on their platforms, which they have no reason to do that, then I'd say Xbox consoles are extremely important for their business strategy. Most of their subscriptions comes from their loyal console fan base, and if they were to leave the console market, they would have to say goodbye to a lot of those subscriptions that they make off the nearly 30 million Xbox Series consoles that they sold. Now, that might not necessarily sound as impressive as the competition. You know, the Nintendo Switch has sold 140 million. You have the PS5, it sold 50 plus million. But even still, 30 million is a significant amount that they make a lot of money from, as we're seeing from these results. And that can't just simply be replaced by leaving the console market with no answer as to how to keep those subscribers. 
So because of all of that, I am fairly certain that we will see another Xbox console, and if the rumors are to be believed, that could actually be sooner rather than later, possibly even as early as 2026. I think people need to kind of just calm down a little bit when it comes to their console business. Yes, they clearly have a different strategy than what we're used to seeing from platform holders, but nearly 30 million consoles sold is nothing to scoff at, and they're still making a lot of money on that user base. Now, they might try to expand in other ways to increase their reach, and you know that's what we're currently seeing, but this will run adjacent to their console business, which again, is also an important component for them. It's also why we will continue to see exclusives from them because they do still need to sell consoles, which in return will also give them more subscriptions. Now, as for PlayStation, though, we also got some news from Bungie today. And for the most part, this is not great. Now, there is one silver lining here to at least some extent, I'll get into that here in just a second. But you can see here posted up by Jason Schreier. He said, Sony's Bungie is shrinking from 1,300 people to 850. 220 laid off, 155 moving to Sony, 75 to a new studio. That's actually since been corrected to 40 people. But Bungie said that we were overly ambitious, our financial safety margins were subsequently exceeded, and we began running in the red. And that's why we're unfortunately seeing layoffs and major changes within Bungie. Sony is not happy with the results that Bungie has delivered post-acquisition. We've kind of known this to at least some extent for quite a while. Multiple reports came out last year and even earlier this year that Sony wasn't necessarily thrilled with them. You know, Sony paid $3.6 billion for the buyout, so they expect consistent results, and Bungie just hasn't lived up to that price tag, and I don't think that there's any other way to spin it. This acquisition has not gone well, but there for a while. There was hope that maybe they could get things turned around with the new Destiny 2 expansion final shape. It reviewed pretty well, and there was a surge of players when it first released, uh, but apparently it still wasn't enough. So, you know, it's always sad to see people lose their jobs. This is something that it's always hard to talk about, but I think by this point, a lot of this has to fall on Bungie's management. When they first got acquired, they said that they were going to stay fully independent, and hey, that sounds great and everything. But at the end of the day, you still have to deliver and meet expectations for your parent company, in this case being Sony. And I, I think Sony has kind of gotten to their breaking point. Reports are already claiming that Sony is taking more control from Bungie. And that doesn't necessarily mean that Bungie's games will suddenly be exclusive to PlayStation, but they will manage them a lot closer. And they're not just going to give them freedom to do whatever they want. The idea of them being independent is kind of waning by this point. Now, the one silver lining here, though, is that they apparently formed a new studio based on 40 employees from an incubation team within Bungie. Uh, it's apparently some kind of sci-fi action game, and that could turn out to be something interesting for Sony. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'd say overall, Bungie hasn't exactly been the runaway hit that Sony hoped they would be, and, and, and that's kind of why we're seeing so much change within Bungie right now. The, the highly speculated Sony takeover is, is kind of happening before our very eyes. Anyways, though, that's going to be it for this episode. But until next time, hit that subscribe button and peace out.